So we're about to break into our second part of our five for five, uh, our five kind of horror stories for the five days worth of study that we're doing on the days before Halloween. Um, we talked about Noah and the flood last time. Uh, this time, the second story is going to be the night of Passover in Egypt as the Israelites or the Hebrews are making their way out. This is kind of what starts the beginning of the, the Exodus in this time. Now, the Passover night, it becomes important to the Jews for this reason. Okay, Moses is asking Pharaoh to release the Jews, release the Jews, release them, release those Israelites, release my people. And Pharaoh keeps telling him, no, no, no. So God sends down ten plagues, uh, all different types of stuff, throughout this time period and the last one is the worst one god says i'm going to send a destroyer to kill the firstborn of every family in order to pharaoh in order for pharaoh to know that i am god supreme i am everything i am what's most important and you need to understand that, Pharaoh, what I wish, it will happen. And so he does these plagues, and this is the tenth one. Uh, Moses is told to go tell the Israelites, or the Jews at this time, uh, the Hebrew people, that they must sacrifice a lamb and spread the blood over the lintel of the door, the top posts of the door, in order for the destroyer, God actually calls him the destroyer, the Bible actually calls this being the destroyer to come into each house and to kill the firstborn. So the blood is on the door in order for the destroyer not to come in to kill the firstborn. Not only the firstborn of the Israelites, the firstborn of the Jews, if they do not spread blood on their door. And also the firstborn of the livestock. Everybody up to the king, Pharaoh, all the way down to the slave people in jail. So whatever it is, it's always the firstborn. So... <clears throat> this happens, this night happens, and I kind of want you to picture any other type of night to where you don't really hear anything rustling in the in the distance. Uh, it's, it's very dark. The wind's kind of blowing through. Um, it could be a brisk evening. Uh, kind of like a dreary silentness to where you understand something important is supposed to be happening, and you're inside your house with your blood on your lintel your blood on your door and you hear screams and shrieks break out through the night break open the silence through people who haven't done what they're supposed to do and putting the blood on their door you hear the cries of a mother who saw her son die you hear the anger of a father who's just walked in and understood that one of their children is no longer there. You walk out your door that you have blood on and see animals lying in the street. Hear people running in chaos back and forth, not knowing what's going on. Because the destroyer has ran through the camp. And taken the people, taken the firstborn, of the people who didn't listen to God. It's terrifying. So much so that Moses and Aaron went up to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said, you can take your people, you can take your Israelites, get out, we do not want you here anymore. But all of that could have been avoided. All the death and dying and sadness and shrieks and pain could have been avoided if they would have just listened to God in the first place, just done what he had commanded and understood that God needs a little bit more commitment. Understand that God, you need to understand that God is supreme, that God is overpowering. He will reign through the world. We must obey. We must listen. We must understand. We're going to continue looking at these stories, but that's the second part of our five-part series. Keep, keep on continuing, and make sure you send me your sentence, please. Bye, y'all.